Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to quickly execute SQL commands without having to build a whole query. This is a developer level video. What does that mean? It means it's going to require a little bit of VBA and a lot of SQL. Got no SQL to do this one. This question comes from Jacob in Tacoma, Washington, one of my Platinum members, but I think two or three other people have asked me this recently. In fact, someone just asked me in the forums on my website this morning, is there any way to quickly run a query without using the QBE, the Query by Example Grid Designer? This thing, this is the QBE Grid. And I love the QBE Grid, especially for beginners. This is a fantastic way to teach people how to build queries from scratch. But if you're a pro, <laughs> or semi-pro, <laughs> if you've been using SQL forever and you just want to issue an SQL statement, right? you just want to run a little quick delete query or an insert query to add a record, something like that, you just want to be able to just do it. You don't want to have to stop and build a whole query. So let me show you how to do this right now. But first, some prerequisites. If you don't know any VBA and you want to learn, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. Once you learn a little tiny bit of VBA, your databases get so much more powerful. So go watch this first. And if you want to learn SQL, if you've never written in the SQL language before, go watch this guy to get started with. All right, it teaches you the basics of SQL. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to copy. And I got all my basics, my customer form, my order form, my contact form, all these different tables here, right? And let's say I want to just quickly delete all of the records in my contact table, okay? Now, yeah, okay, I only got, what, 14 in here. I can just come in here and do this and delete them. But let's pretend it's a little more complicated than that. If you want to do it with building a query, like a delete query, you got to go to create, you got to query design, you got to build the query. Okay, so all I want to do is execute a quick SQL statement. All right, if you're familiar with SQL Server and you've used the Management Studio, you just type it in and boom, execute it, and there you go. How do we do that in Access? Well, I like to just put a text box on a menu form somewhere and then make a button that says run that SQL, and it's pretty much that simple. If you're worried about security, you can put it on a manager menu and make a password button to get to that form, which I strongly recommend because you don't just want anybody running SQL statements willy-nilly in your database, right? That's a bad idea. I teach you how to create a manager menu with a password form, right, in my input box video. So go watch that if you want to learn how to do that. All right, so let's pretend we're on our manager menu. I'm going to go into design view here. I'm just going to grab a text box. I'm going to steal this one. All right, and let's make this big so we can put our SQL statement in here. Open up its properties. Instead of current date, I'll call this one MySQL. No, it's not the MySQL program. It's my SQL. <laughs> And we'll get rid of the control source and the format. So it's just a plain text box. And then we'll just repurpose this button here. We'll just make it say run SQL. And of course, we'll continue to use my status box, which this is something that I show you how to use in my blank template video. It's basically just a text box. And I made a function called status, right? And all status does is it takes what you send to it and puts it in the status box. That's it. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Now the code to go in the button is gonna be pretty straightforward too. Go to right click build event. That's gonna bring you into the buttons code, which right now it says, hello world. We're just gonna get rid of that. Now, normally I'm a fan of current db.execute. All right, I like to use this in my VBA code where I want to run queries and I don't want my users to see error messages. Okay, like if you're doing behind the scenes work. Um, However, in this particular case, since this is a tool for me, I do want to see error messages. If I go to delete something and it can't delete for some any reason, I want to see that access generated error message. I got a separate video coming out that I've been planning for a while on the differences between run SQL and uh, execute. Look for that soon. But in this particular case, I want to use do command run SQL. All right, so we'll put a little status up first. Status executing. And then whatever your query is, right, MySQL. And then we're going to do command dot run SQL, MySQL. That's it. And then status done. Okay. Do command dot run SQL handles the heavy lifting. All right. Save it. Come back over to your database. We're going to close this form and reopen it. 
And let's just type in here, delete star from contact T and then run SQL. All right, it says done. Let's check our work and see. Oh, there we go. Everybody's gone. Want to do a simple insert, right? Insert into customer T. Uh, let's do first name, last name, values, right? Hikaru Sulu. And that's a quick way to insert a record. Do it. Let's check our customer table. And there he is down on the bottom here. I'm surprised I didn't have him here before. Okay. I mean, yeah, it only puts in the fields that you select, but you get the point. Now, here's why I like to see those error messages. If I say delete star from order T and I hit run SQL, I get the error message. It can't delete the 16 records that are in there due to key violations. Why? Because I have referential integrity on. All right, there are order details in the detail table. So that with that relationship made, I can't just delete those records willy nilly. But if I were to change this to current db.execute my SQL, okay, and I hit run, I just see nothing happen. Why? Because current db.execute, in a nutshell, it, it bypasses accesses checking for errors logic. Okay, and it just runs the ex it, it just executes the SQL statement right at the tables. If errors are generated, you generally don't see them. Okay, and if I check my order table, those records are still there. And here I am scratching my head, why isn't this working? So this is one of those cases where I do want to use run SQL so that access can show me error messages. Okay, now, what about a select statement? What if you just wanna see some records? Select star from customer T. Run SQL. Eh, eh. The run SQL action requires an argument consisting of an SQL statement. I thought that was an SQL statement. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, this only works with action queries, right? Delete, append, insert, make table, those kinds of things. For a select statement, it's going to involve a little more programming. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. I'm gonna show you how to run select statements. We're gonna create a temporary query using something called a query def, which is really cool. So check that out. And before I let you go, if you wanna learn more about SQL in Microsoft Access, I've got a whole series of seminars on just SQL. Part one goes over select statements, right? Selecting and viewing data, where conditions, order by clauses. Part two is all action queries, modifying data, right? We also talk about some things that you can't do with the query by example grid like union queries. And then part three is manipulating the structure of your tables. You can actually build tables, modify fields, that kind of stuff. That's my SQL seminars. Here's a link, I'll put a link down below you can click on. And if you wanna learn how to do select statements in this little box that I built in this class, well, that's in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases and have access to my code vault. So what are you waiting for? Join today. But that, folks, will be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. 
You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.